previously a Master Detective Archives ring code. There's another solution. I'll disguise you so you can keep on investigating. Ah, oh, this could don't make that face, all right? God damn it, I don't like it when you make that face. Yeah, hey, what face you talking about, Yuma? Hey, hey. <laughs> ah, Jesus Christ. And now back to Yuma Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Hello! Sneako B! Back with some more Master Detective Archives Rain Code. When we last left off, Oh no, our pal Karumi got arrested for murder! Ah, uh, ah, uh, crap, ah. Uh, I was gonna ask her out later. The preferably not in my girl outfit. Anyway, uh, Kinky Peko Pekayama here is sending her peacekeepers around the school and uh, keeping us from actually doing any investigating. But in order for us to get some information, we use Desahiko's uh, disguise ability to disguise herself as the other three potential uh, suspects here to talk with each of the girls as well as the other students to, and get as much information about who they are, what they were doing at the time of the incident, as well as other little knickknacks lying around like this weird water gun thing. It looks like a freaking revolver. Oh my God. However, we fly a little too close to the sun when we uh, disguise ourselves as the vice director lady herself, leading to a run in with the real version and her getting ready to blast us on the stage. Okay, Shinigami, you done being mad at me. Can we do this? Okay, fine. Double powers. All right, let's go to portal, everybody go. And hopefully this marks the end of Shinigami being angry at us because I will say, Oh man, that was getting old. Yeah, like that, that just went on way too long. Like I get what they were going for. I get we had to have like a moment where the two characters that are with each other all the time have to have like a conflict. But the, I feel like the reasoning behind it was really dumb. It really did remind me of Persona 5's Ryuji versus Morgana like arc where the two characters are just so angry at each other for so long. And it actually takes away from like other characters that you're just like, God, just get over it already. At the very least, I was at least happy that I feel for the most part, Shinigami didn't really talk. She just didn't say much, you know? I mean, when she did say something, she said literally the same thing every time, which was like, you know, you're a horny perv and blah, 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 which was annoying. But at the very least, it wasn't like she was like spouting off something every two seconds, like she kind of generally does already and saying the same thing again and again, because then that really would have been like unbearable. But as it is, it was more just like a, yeah, this was a bad call, a bit of a, a mild annoyance. Similarly, I feel with the whole Desahiko thing, like I, I've seen a lot of you guys in, in the comment section saying like, ah, oh, you know, I thought it was kind of funny actually. And, and just found it as more of a completely hopeless doof who's for the most part harmless. And I, I'd say it probably is the case that he is just a harmless idiot. Like it's clear he really has no like swiggity swag and probably could never actually get a lady to, you know, like him. My problem was just that when he was saying shit like, you know, like, hey, do you mind if I bang you? Like, it, like to Yuma, who is just, he disguised as a lady. It's like, it's like multiple levels of fucked up and it's like, oh my God. Come on, man. It's kind of like the same thing I was feeling with Shinigami, where it's like, okay, we get it. We get it. We get it. It wasn't that funny the first time, and now we're doing it 30 more times. That said, Desigo is definitely not the worst of like the horny pervy characters that I've you know, come across in fucking anime or other video games. I don't think he's as bad as like Teru Teru, nor do I honestly think he would ever truly act on something and insulting a woman. Harasser, maybe. I mean, clearly he was, I think, harassing the women in the city when he was just like constantly asking him out like, hey, you want to do this? And then like going to the next person. But at least he has other things going on with his personality aside from that, you know, like he is a bit of a bro, which is kind of nice, at least when he isn't being pervy. Because that's what like sort of brings me back and then pushes me away and then brings me back. So we'll see. I I'm definitely not liking Desigo as much as Halara. I think Halara was... Well, I don't want to say, I don't know. It wasn't, to be honest, too much wrong with Alara and other than they just didn't like people, which I feel like is understandable. <laughs> and I guess also that they are maybe slightly greedy and trying to extortion a lot of money out of us. But aside from that, they're clearly the most capable of the of our colleagues. But I do appreciate the different dynamic that we're getting here with uh, Desiko and Yuma, you know? With Desiko not even like, like, okay, really about being around dead bodies. Uh, but anyway, last episode, uh, Lotaro OL said, uh, Yuma solving a case. Meanwhile, at the Nocturnal Detective Agency, Yako crawling on the ground. Yuma, where are you? I'm gonna die of starvation here! Vivia, wow, I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Vivia would say that, wouldn't he? Uh, we never did get the Chief's uh, meat buns. He probably is gonna be mega pissed by the time we get back there. I mean, aside for the fact that we're also doing exactly the opposite of what he told us to do. That is involving ourselves in another case against the peacekeepers. Not only that, but we didn't bring the goddamn meat buns. But Latara, thank you so much for your hilariously accurate comment. 
And it's that reason you are coming to the day. But anyway, we are now moving on to the mystery labyrinth. I will say it does seem like this this chapter overall it kind of got to the mystery labyrinth faster than it did before, which I think is good. I think a lot of the last chapter was sort of like establishing the city and the gameplay loop and a lot of other stuff. Which is why it ended up taking a really long time, I feel like, between, you know, talking to our party members to going out and doing some investigating and then meeting up with Lara and then doing more investigating and then going back and doing the other different scenes and doing this. And I felt like it was like four or five episodes before we finally got to the mystery labyrinth. But I think it was more just to kind of like skit things in motion, get us used to it. And now this time around, it was a lot faster, which I think is good. I'm interested to see, though, like, I think this whole like setup about the ca this case is very interesting. I am very curious to see who the the killer of this one will be i feel like like it could be one of those ones where oh it's not any of these three girls and it's karumi but i i really don't think it's her because it just doesn't make any sense to me so i really think it's gonna end up being a case of it is one of the three girls and if it is i think it's gonna be the uh the uh, quieter girl who's up in the lights uh Kurine. that's my thought process and she used like a dropper to drop the poison in the glass from above that's my prediction. Let's see if we're uh, anywhere, anywhere close to being right. All right, guys, here we go. Time to hop in the Mr. Labyrinth with Desahiko. Desahiko's gonna be probably like fucking staring at Shinigami's tits the whole time. Which, you know what, to be fair to him, it's kind of, they're kind of, it's kind of hard not to look at them. They're just, they're there. And she kind of, she kind of flaunts them off. She like throws them in Yuma's face sometimes. It's like, hey, you want to touch? Oh my God, for the eighth time, no, <laughs> please. It is funny, I, I will say, slight disappointed that the, the mystery labyrinth, at least from the outside, and doesn't really look any different. Like, it always just looks like you're, you, like, just went to Vegas. I thought it would be, like, themed differently for everyone, but... Ow. I mean, it changes when you get in the inside, at least past the hallways. The hallways seem to be about the same, but the rooms, when we get to the main spots, are different. But I think it would have been kind of cool. I mean, it, it's not a huge deal. It's, that's a super nitpick. There's already a ton of this stuff in this game that shows this game had way more budget, but I'm guessing they just didn't have enough budget to do that, so. What? What's going on? Where are we? <laughs> I'll say, seeing him freak out about this whole place is probably pretty enjoyable. Uh, is this hell? <laughs> Martina must have shot me. Yeah. Alara, meanwhile, was just kind of like rolled this shit off like, oh, hey, look at that. Cool. You got some pretty neat stuff, Yuma. You never told me about your sweet demon powers. Tessie goes like, oh my God, I'm fucking dead. What the fuck did you do to me, Yuma? You sack of shit. <laughs> oh, God damn it. I never even got to touch a real boob. Only my own fake boobs. Ah! No way. Why would I be in hell? Even when it comes to women, I always stop just shy of criminal activity. Oh my God, Tessie, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> Stop just shy of it. This is what I mean. I think, I mean, I do think he's harmless. He's a creepo for sure, but it's, yeah. Like, Teru Teru for sure would, would have been on a list somewhere, right? He he 100% committed some crimes. Desahiko is just annoying. Calm down, Desahiko. This place is a mystery labyrinth. Huh? A mystery what? Oh, let me explain for a bit. I will say, I, I do think Desahiko's voice actor is is fantastic <laughs> seriously huge huge kudos to him his, his performance is perfect perfect for the character and the same goes to everybody in this game the 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 voice work in this game is all pretty damn top tier it was gonna take a while all right here we go blah, 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 blah. whole time jesse goes just sobbing <laughs> <laughs> now jesse goes stop listening to me it's just staring at shinigami's tits right were you listening jesse hiko yeah, I was just doing some appraising. I knew it. Appraising? No, you're next to me now, suddenly. Yuma, this babe is totally top tier. Where'd you meet a hottie like her? She's been chaining me the whole time. Have you noticed? There's never a shortage of girls when you're around. You're the best wingman ever. I hate when, you're, I hate when your nose turns into like a pig nose for some reason. Master, this munchkin is an eyesore. You mind if I boom kill him now? Sure, go ahead. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't, I don't care. Really? I could just I just kill him right here now? Yeah, sure, why not? I mean, really, I like, we only like met a little bit and he's kind of a weirdo. What the hell, Yuma? That's true. <sighs> yeah, you're right. It's okay, go ahead and kill me. Yay! No, you can't. Master, is that how it is between you two? Oh, you're making me jealous. 
What, do you think her killing you is like some sexual like advance? No, it isn't. She just means actually killing you. I just explained everything to you, but you weren't paying attention. Ah, whatever. It's gonna let this shit fuck you up later. How about that? Hey, let's hurry up and do, you know. Oh, uh, so this is the part where you make out with me and Destiny is gonna be like, what the fuck? And then I pull it, and you pull a sword out of my pants or something. <laughs> oh wait, no, I pull it out of your mouth. Huh? What does that mean? Is it something not family friendly? Yeah, actually, kind of isn't. Get ready. Master. Oh my God. Are you ready <laughs> to give your life? <laughs> it's for so Jesse goes react to this time though. Yes, I am. Is the dance really in necessary? Yes! You also must mutter about me this time. You're just doing it to get a rise at Desico. Yep! Anyway, stick your hand down my mouth. Do it, Yuma! Ah, I'm not I'm not getting used to this. I hope you know that. Deep throat me! Mm. No, you're deep throating me! Wait, no, god damn it! Just give me the sword! Ugh. It's sticky today. This is nice. <laughs> what? You have like a sword fetish or a vor fetish? <laughs> I, I, I'm so excited. I, <laughs> I feel like I just discovered a whole new kink. <laughs> what the fuck? What are you getting off on? I, I want to know specifically uh, what just happened got you off and didn't freak you out. Hey, Yuma, me next, yeah? Let's swap places. <laughs> me next. Sorry, but that's not possible. Shinigami's powers can only be used by whoever made a pact with her. A pact? This goes even deeper than I thought. <laughs> okay, make the pact. Just, just do it. You fucking do it to me. I explained that earlier, too. Anyway, next up is materializing the solution key. Man. He's gonna be charmed by that. He's gonna be down there. It's gonna be raining on his face. He's like, yeah. He's like eating it up. Oh, oh no, you're gonna make me sick. She's perfect. I'm in love. Dude, just, I feel like you're in love with anyone with a pulse and with no penis. Really? Really? All right, I've made up my mind. I have no idea what this mystery labyrinth thing is. But before we get out of here, I'll get you to fall in love with me. Why are you looking at me when you're saying that? Hmm. If you decapitate yourself, then I would consider it. That can be easily arranged. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what is that face portrait? Where did you get that leaf from? No, it can't. Now, let's set off to unriddle this mystery labyrinth. Our target is the culprit who preys on the truth. Yeah, she seems to be over our little argument now, which is good. Thank God. Anyway, that's good. I don't want her to decapitate you, alright? She does that to me literally all the time. Every time we have a, I have a question. This is the beginning of our battle for love. Jeez. I hope this works out. Jeez. Oh, Lord, here we go. Down to run the halls again. And I feel like Dustin is not going to be a whole lot of help here. So, this is the mystery labyrinth. Oh, talk about creepy. Hey, why don't we just head back and grab something sweet? I prefer corpses and mysteries over sweets. What? Hey! What? Oh, dog, wait for me! Don't leave me behind! No, you gotta run while we talk. By the way, Yuma, there's something I gotta ask. Oh my god, what? I don't remember how I got here. Is it because I'm in love? Oh, right, right. You, for, you forget everything about before coming in here. I forgot about that part. I mean, not that it really matters. It's not like you were, did any investigating yourself, so it's like you were, we weren't going to be any help anyway. It's not love. It's the mystery labyrinth. When an outsider enters the mystery labyrinth, their memories are sealed away. This isn't going to mess up my brain, is it? Am I gonna be alright? Huh? Probably? Shigami? I don't know. Maybe? Yeah, I don't know. What do 
difference does it make? Your brain is already messed up. Ha! <laughs> anyway... Are we at the exit yet? We just got here. Oh, if only there was a brave, strong boy around! I would swap my master for him in a heartbeat! Huh? You can do that? All right! <laughs> Now I'm getting pumped up! Oh, uh! well, off he goes. I wonder if he'll be okay. He's like Kazuichi levels of horny, right? Again, like relatively harmless, but still very publicly horny. Someone watch us for socket wrench! Angie's Raven! Who cares? He's just gonna slow us down anyway. Violent! Oh, he's back. <laughs> We've got trouble, Yuma. There's something up ahead. Was it a cue? Did it look like a tiny creature? No, oh, it's a witch. A witch is about to execute somebody. <laughs> uh, execute? Miss Dearful, let's take a look. You're going to ward it and not running away? Seriously? Yep, running towards it. Wee! Oh, this is new. What the fuck am I in, goddamn Mordor? Or maybe I'm right more like the uh, the reverse world and freaking uh, Stranger Things. Uh, who's that up there? Is that Karen? Who is that? Over there, there. See? Damn, that witch is scary. Oh, it's the, yeah, it's, uh, Martina. That's a mystery phantom. Their mysteries give him form that try to block us from reaching the truth. Damn, that she, that she looks a bit like Samugi in this, uh, in this, uh, color palette. They appear in the form of someone interfering with the investigation. How did you mention it? That witch kind of looks like the peacekeeper Martina. She's the one hiding the truth? What is she doing over there? About to burn the witch. I shall now commence the execution. All criminals must be purified by the holy fire of darkness. Two D flames. Chiaki no! Oh wait. Kurumi? That's Kurumi. Never mind. We're fine. I mean, no, Kurumi no! Fan service. Nice. No, that's that's what fucking fan service are you watching, dude? So she's pinning the crime on the flat chested Ugo, then killing her to cover up the truth. Oh, come on, Shingon, I thought we were past this. Come on. Also, just saying, not that it's really that important, but you call that flat chested? Come on! This is terrible. We have to save her. You're just not even being accurate anymore. Relax. This is the mystery labyrinth, remember? That's not actually her. But still, I can't leave her like this. I can't leave metaphorical version of Kurumi up there to burn alive. Dare intervene in this execution? Yeah. Anyone who defies the peacekeepers will suffer the same fate. All right. Well, here we go. Wow. Time for a mother flipping death match. Don't let any shady statement slip by. Mystery phantoms sometimes hide the truth within a statement. Use repel in these situations to get to the center of it all. Oh, this is new. We got, actually got a new mechanic. Interesting. Was this... Uh, was this a, something like this in Danganronpa? I don't know if I remember this. You're in the way. You're a detective. Ah. How foolish. Get in my way and you'll be executed. You dare defy me? It's clear who the culprit is. My flame doesn't hold up. Ah! Ah, okay. Cool. Clear? That's impossible. You don't have any evidence. You're a fool to defy peacekeepers. Very well. Allow me to educate you. All right, wine bottle, wine glasses, chemistry lab. The truth is already apparent. That's not what I wanted to do. 
Okay, so no poison was detected in or on, on or in or on the wine bottle. They were brought from the theater theater's club underground storage by the prop master and placed upside on the on the on stage shelf. The glass response was placed poison detected in glass by the victim, but other glass had no traces. Chemistry lab poison. That's right. And third, almost after thirty minutes. Let's guess what she says here. Be Karumi. Prior to the performance, she switched the wine with the juice. Switch the wine with the juice. She mixed in the poison to commit the crime. Okay, here we go. That it's that one there. Only Karumi could have done it. It's the simple truth. If you intend. So yeah, I actually think it is the wine bottle. At that moment, she mixed in the poison to commit the crime. Wrong. Oh, okay. Oh. This one. Eh. Wait, no. Oh, I guess it must be the. It can only be Kurumi then. In truth, they, no. It could. It could be a bunch of other people. Only Kurumi could have done it. Uh, no. Wow. I'm being. Fu I'm fucking up here. All right, man. Just listen to what she's saying here. The first year ago, the only one who could have mixed in the poison when the wine was switched out. Yeah. The issue was whether or not putting the poison in that at that time could have killed Karen. Is he about the poison used in the murder? Wait, the po already. the poison there? So the chemistry like poison okay. is actually what it is. She mixed in the poison to commit the crime. Oh, there we go. It was the poison there. Does it prove it though? The toxicity of the poison used in this crime is neutralized 30 minutes after being exposed to open air. Right. I guess we're assuming that it would have been too long between the time that she mixed it and the time it was on stage. Oh, because yes, because we sat through. Well, we don't know what the real time of the the play was, but it definitely had to been more than 30 minutes up to the point that it was. They actually drank out of it, right? But Kareem switched out the wine before the performance began, meaning more than 30 minutes had passed. Yeah. So even if Kurumi had mixed in the poison, by the time the incident occurred, it would have been completely neutralized. Which means Kurumi isn't the culprit. I mean, it was like, they didn't explicitly say that it was like, oh yes, yeah, so we, had, we had been watching that play for this amount of time. And technically, I mean, technically, maybe it was even, when she says she switched out before the performance, I mean, I don't know if it was like right before the performance or, but whatever, anyway, the, the point is, you still could infer that it was more than 30 minutes. Wow! You defeated the monster! Yeah, see that shit? Slice that crap in half. You know, after fucking him a few times. Alrighty! I'll save Kurumi. Leave it to me! What? They're gonna leave me to, to hook up with her or whatever. Hey, wait! It's all right now. Hey, aren't you getting kind of cold? I'll warm you right up. What the hell is she wearing? Has she got like her swimsuit on? Or is that her underpants? Oh! Oh, God. Oh, Jessica, what did you do? It's just Karen and you killed her. Oh, you suck at this. I told you, you're the worst. It's the victim, Cotton. I am the culprit who killed me. Eh? The truth is, this was a suicide. I put in the poison myself. I killed myself. <laughs> I'm so sorry! Uh oh. Oh god, she's a nun now! <laughs> I'm sorry, too. <laughs> no, it wasn't a suicide. I won't let her take the blame just to end this investigation. A very more gothic Lolita. Hey, that's my stick. <laughs> okay, lady. Karen's corpse poison vial, Karen's manor. Karen's course was no external injuries, and given the circumstances, it's likely she died from drinking the poison. Okay. Poison vial, empty from the beginning. It is dry and shows no signs of ever being wet. Its lid is loose, and it can easily spill, so it wasn't filled even with colored water. Karen's manner. Karen was more tense than usual prior to the start of the performance, pacing restlessly and yelling at the under upperclassmen who were slow to make preparations. Hmm. 
I guess we'll have to see what she says. I'm thinking maybe the poison vial. There was nothing in there. Oh. This was just a suicide. Oh, you demon lie to me. Uh, oh. It's all my fault. I wanted to die on stage. I put real poison in the vial. Wrong. Ugh. The truth. God, it, it does feel fucking good when he sliced through the contradictions in this game. No, the vial used on stage was just another prop. It was empty. There was no poison in it. It's a very meaty sound effect. My controller shakes. As a matter of fact, the vial was dry. There definitely weren't any signs of it being used. So it's impossible to commit suicide using that vial. <laughs> yeah, Karen. Yeah, character in an alternate alt star art style. You don't belong in this game. Not Rui Ar uh, Kamatsuki artwork. Whoa. Did you get it? Really dodged the bullet there. I was about to make my move. You shouldn't approach women in the mystery labyrinth. This isn't the real world. Yeah, you'll die. Probably. I didn't expect you of all people to warn me about ladies. This mystery labyrinth is terrifying. You ain't seen nothing yet. Wait till the attack on Titan part. <laughs> the what? Hang on. Why was it impossible to have been a suicide? Even if the vial wasn't used, she still could have drank the poison herself. But the only thing Cotton drank from on stage was the shuffled glass. Even if Cotton added in the poison, there's no guarantee she'd be the one to drink it herself. It's not how someone who wanted to die would go about it. Gotcha. Yeah, I don't remember the play, so I didn't know it got shuffled. Hang on. Wouldn't the same be true for the culprit? If the glasses on stage were switched around, there's no guarantee the victim will take the poison one, right? Oh, uh, maybe the killer wasn't aiming at Karen specifically, but just wanted either actress to die. Hmm, I can't completely rule that out. That's gotta be it. I'm a genius, even without my memories. <laughs> what do you think, Shinigami? You, uh, wanna dump your master for me? I'm just wondering, how do you guys think Desahiko survived his intro tutorial prologue case of his own? You think he just, like, disguised himself as, like, a peacekeeper or somebody else until and, like, just waited until the heat died down? <laughs> like, did he even solve anything? Really? Hmm, I'm not sure. This mystery labyrinth. I like Shinigami is like fucking with him. Yeah, of course. I'll grab a taxi or whatever to take you. Jeez. Jeez. What the? Turn on the lights. Da 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 da. Yep. Da. Never came up with the 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 original school jingle like that. Wrong, 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 you're wrong. Huh? What is this place? It looks like the school. With more floating desk. And there are three doors? Looks like it's up to me. There it is again. Oh god, no, come on. This is what I meant about the decapitation of the car. <laughs> was that just a eco screaming that time? I think it was. How, how, how? That'd be funny if Desi goes covered in his blood. This isn't okay at all. This could kill me. See? Never mind that. Look. Hmm. It seems the roots are separated based on the how done it aspect of the case. Actually, I just realized why the hell is my blood red and not pink anyway? That's not consistent at all, Shinigami. Whatever, get over it. What do you mean, how done it? What? You're a master detective and you don't know? Don't tell me you're a how done it virgin. Ew, gross. Ew. Wait, I, I, I know what this is. I, I was just testing Yuma since he's a trainee. Well, Yuma, did you figure it out? It's about how the crime was done, right? So, how was the poison mixed into the glass? How was the poison brought to the theater hall? 
How is the poison glass chosen? Yep, and once we solve all three hows for the crime, the final route, the conclusion of the who done it, should appear. Cool. And who done it is about the culprit's identity. If we figure out how the poison was applied, it'll identify the culprit. Nice. You sure know your stuff. So, which way should we go? We'll probably have to explore all of them. So, I'll let you pick the order, Master. I suggest we start with whatever route has the easiest answers, so we can solve it quickly. Hmm. Okay, how is the poison mixed in the glass? How is the poison brought to the theater hall? How is the poison glass chosen? I'm actually going to start with the center one. How is the poison brought to the theater hall? How was the poison brought to the theater hall? You sure about that? Yeah. So, our goal here is to answer the question, how was the poison brought to the theater hall? Speaking of, where did the poison used in the murder come from? The chemistry lab in the school. It's a highly toxic experimental chemical. Why not just take it from the chem lab and keep it hidden in your clothes or something? The chemical's bottle was huge, so it's difficult to carry around in secret. Then they must have swapped the containers and brought it to the theater. That's gotta be it. Yeah, but you have to be able to put it in something... Well, it still would only have a 30-minute shelf life, right? Which means it had been grabbed during the performance. Oh! Snap out of it! It's time you showed off the fruits of my mentorship! What mentorship? You just put the entire chapter just yelling at me about being a perp! Huh, <sighs> that's it, I gotta focus. What was used to transport the po poison? Paintbrush, eyedropper, different container. Eyedropper! This way! We're, we're gonna crash! Oh shit! Not eyedropper! Oh, I guess I've been ahead of myself! I guess it was the paintbrush then. There was a wet paintbrush in the chemistry lab. The culprit used it to carry out the poisoning. They took the poison out of the lab by applying it with the brush. Okay. Focus! What was the brush onto? Wine bottle, the costume, another glass. The missing glass could be brought to the theater hall without drawing suspicion. Okay, well this is already throwing out the window my fucking theory. The culprit poisoned the glass and brought it to the theater hall. You can do it, master. What happened to the other glass? Handed the prop master, switched with the used glass, handed it to Karen on stage, switched with the used glass. The culprit replaced the poison glass with the prop glass. <sighs> I thought I was going to have a heart attack. We're not done yet. It's just getting started. Just getting started, Jaziko! At least we now know how the poison was brought in. The culprit used the paintbrush from the chemistry lab and directly applied the chemical onto the backup glass. Okay. Yeah, if it's the same kind of glass as the prop on stage, it could be brought into the theater without suspicion. But the chemical is only lethal for 30 minutes, right? Even if it was prepared before the performance, it takes about 45 minutes before the Duel of Poison Cup scene. Okay. That's now we have that time right. now. Right, so how about that, Yuma? Hang on. There is one person who could have brought the poison in before it expired. Actually, yeah, you know, I'm actually starting to wonder, maybe it's, it's actually gonna be a case of all three girls were responsible in some way. You know, they're acting like, you know, oh, I think it's you, I think it's you, I think it's you. Maybe that's like part of a pact or something. But it, but it's weird because all of the girls had a picture of them with Aiko or Aika and they tore out the other girls, you know? If they were all in it together, why would they do that? Why would they sort of pretend that the other girls weren't there? 
To me, that shows disdain for the other girls. And uh, you're supposed to pick the right one here, yeah? Can you do it, Yuma? Where's that little kid? Where's the little boy? He should be up here too. <laughs> yeah, you can count on me. That'd <laughs> be funny if he was back up there. He's like, what the heck am I doing here? Who could have brought the poison to the stage? I think it's, uh, it's the girl on the left. The the whole time. No, you weren't. It's you. Yoshiko! Yoshiko, it was you, wasn't it? What? Um, me? The only way to use a poison with a 30 minute expiration, 45 minutes into a play, is to bring it during the performance. But Warna was acting on stage the whole time, and Kurene was managing the lights on the catwalk. But Yoshiko, you were working backstage, oh. so you were the only one who could move about freely. Oh, no, it is. Wow. No, this is this is a case all three of the girls are responsible. She brought the poison in, but you know what the Kurene did? She shined the light up from above, and I bet she shined it on the one that had the poison in it. Because she, she could see from above, right? The the mix the mixture. I don't know about the other girl. What would the other girl have done that contributed here? I guess maybe the way she mixed it, <laughs> moved the stuff around? Yeah. I think it is actually going to be all three. Am I going to smoke all three of these girls? In fact, you arrived late to the theater hall after the performance had already begun. You were about 15 minutes late, which is 30 minutes before the duel of poisoned cups. Just enough time for the poison to be lethal. So it was you. You brought the poison and got caught in to drink it. No, it's not me. Oh, we got a runner. She ran away! Yuma, after her! Hey, you can't get away that easy! <laughs> My master Come here. loves hunting down prey on the run! I guess. Not a dog. Uh. Where'll she go? Where'd she go? No, 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 no. What was the glass put in to be transported? A pouch, the pocket of a school uniform. It's gotta be a pouch of some kind. Okay. As a production assistant, Yoshiko always had a bag with her. In it, she carried the glass with poison brushed on. The glass would be small enough to fit in the bag, and even if someone saw it, she could say it's just a prop. I see. So she prepared for the murder while in her role as a production assistant. Uh, there's no way to run. You're gonna die, you go. But you know what? It doesn't feel right chasing after a girl like this. Seriously. Hey, time to cough it up! You did it, didn't you? Not... Me, I, I didn't do it. You think crying will save you? Well, you're right. You're so <laughs> cute. Hey, come here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you're, well, you know what? You're right. I don't give a fuck anymore. Get off, Desuhiko. It's all good. With my kind of charisma, I can make anyone a fan. With my kind of charisma, I'm just gonna date anybody, even if they kill people. They can kill me. I don't give a shit. She might even lead us all the way to our goal. Why do you always get all the attention, Yoshiko? You're such an ass-kissing bimbo. Were you jealous when Karen took your spot? Is that why you killed her? That's way too mean. Even if she is the culprit, I'm sure she has a heartbreaking reason why. I didn't do it! I'm not the culprit! Burr. <laughs> 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 All right, 
What we got? Warner's actions, Yoshiko's actions, Kurne's actions, Karen's here. murder. Oh, this is interesting. Warner was acting during the performance, of course. It would have been difficult for her to have purposely poisoned Karen. Yoshiko always watches plays begin to end. But for this performance, she arrived late to the theater hall. She sat at the right edge of the front row and didn't bother or didn't leave before the blackout. Kurne, as a member of the line crew, was standing on the catwalk above the stage during the performance. Karen's manner more tense than usual, right? I'm going to say probably it's Yoshiko, so I guess we're focusing on Yoshiko here. Uh. The hypocrite Yoshiko is the culprit! Oh, ow! Only you could have brought the poison. You must... Only Save me, Jessica! Use your horny power! No, no, no! I'm not the culprit! Yoshiko, take your poison glass. Damn, that came slow. Ugh. Secretly in the dark. I didn't do it. No one can swap the glasses. Ugh. Oh, shit. Hmm? Wait, hold on. I don't want to read it yet. No one could have swapped the glasses. Oh wait, no, I, I fucking equipped the wrong one because I'm an idiot. I'm a fucking no idiot. No one can swap the glasses. Okay, here we go. <laughs> wait, really? Okay, maybe I should just wait for her to finish now. <laughs> no, that was the last one. Right. You're gonna seem like the only one who could have brought the poison, but is she really the culprit? In that case. Just who did it? Then the black would have been her only chance to swap the glasses. Could she really have done that? Let's check the solution keys to see what Yoshiko was doing dur during the blackout. Oh, I, I'm okay. It's this. She sat at the right edge of the front row and didn't leave before the blackout. It, it, okay, okay. It was that. It, it was that part right there. It's this one. Ooh, that was a tough one. That was actually really it had me going for a loop. Yeah. Yoshiko returned to the theater hall. She sat at the right edge in the front row for the rest of the show. She would have had to move from the audience onto the stage to reach the shelf and swap glasses. But that's impossible. The lights were only out for five seconds. Yeah. Even if she ran over, someone would have heard her footsteps. So Yoshiko couldn't have been the one who swapped the glasses during the performance. <laughs> Boom. Okay. Oh, she disappeared. So Yoshiko wasn't the culprit? She did bring the poison from the chem lab into the theater though, right? The method was already explained. But still, she's not the culprit. Uh, I... I'm almost wondering if this is gonna be like a, you know, like a wishy-washy thing too, where it's like, if technically all three of them were somewhat responsible, is it three culprits or is it only like, I mean, no, that would still count as the culprits, right? If she couldn't have swapped the glasses on the shelf, she can't be the one who committed the crime. Let's keep going for now. There may be more ahead. I think I'm seeing a theme here, though. Three doors, three girls. We focused on Yoshiko this time. All this is making me scared of women. <gasps> I wish Shinigami would comfort me. Committed to master. <laughs> oh, damn it! I should give up my memories and sign a pact with the Death God, too, then! Quick, Yuma! Punch me in the back of the head as hard as possible! Okay. Let's not. See, I like how she's just kind of rolling with it now. Like, she likes, she's like fucking with him. Oh boy, now what? Damn. No matter what we try, it's always a dead end. I'm gonna slice my Are throat you again. Sure that's the case? What if there's something that makes the wall collapse? Hmm. Doesn't seem like it. Nothing can be done here. So this doesn't lead to who it is, even if we solve how was the poison brought to the theater hall? Seems that way. Oh. Well, we should turn back for now. Okay. With my magic, we'll be there in a snap. Ha <laughs> ha! Okay, we did zoom last time. Let's do hocus pocus. Your voice amplified, 
and echoes across the area. Uh, that's it? Yep, that's it. Now hurry up and pick another one, Master. What? Hocus, what is Hocus Pocus even referencing? I, I, it's a reference to something I don't, I don't get. It. This is the Drag Quest reference. It's fine, because it made the same sound, too. <laughs> that's it, that's it. You guys will have to explain that one to me. No point in rushing. Let's take it nice and slow. Who wants a break? We can't do that. There's a time limit to solving the mystery labyrinth. Time limit? What happens when it runs out? We all die. Well, your soul leaves your body and you're trapped wandering the mystery labyrinth forever. In the end, your soul will be absorbed into the mystery labyrinth and you disappear. In other words, you die. Human, come on! We gotta get out of here! Yeah, I know. Master, which route do you want to take next? Uh, let's go with the one on the right. How is the poison glass chosen? You want to go with how is the poison glass chosen? Jeez. Yellow this time. Everywhere we go is mega creepy. Is there somewhere we can take a break? Wherever you want. We're gonna some weird stutters in this one. Rest for all of eternity. Anyway, how did the culprit get the victim to choose the glass with poison in it? The hell's going on with the stutter? The glasses were mixed around on stage, after all. Um, would you mind telling me the sequence of events that happened when the glasses were shuffled? It's no fair otherwise. I don't know about being fair, but here's exactly what happened. The Duel of Poison's Cup scene began around 45 minutes into the performance. At the start, the victim, Karen, oh, cool. brought the glasses and bottle from the shelf that's on the set. Karen then took out the poison vial from her pocket and poured it into one of the glasses. But the vial was just a prop. It didn't have any real poison in it. After that, the glasses were shuffled. <laughs> Ah, ah. Whoa! What's going on here? It's not like we're trying to find the lost ark or something. <laughs> it, it's all right. We can keep going by solving mysteries. Right now, concentrate. Uh, focus, you must focus. Uh, who shuffled the glasses during the performance of the poison cups? Uh, it was Kedding. Oh wait, sorry, I fucked up. I'm an idiot. Sorry, but it was war. We're a carrot. I'm, I'm fucking stupid. This must be it. The two people on stage who took turns shuffling the glasses were Luna and Cotton. Cotton. Okay. Who chose the glass first? It was Carrot. This must be it. Tiny desk. First person to choose a glass was Cotton. Which glass had the poison? The glass Karen chose, the glass Warren chose, both glasses. The glass Karen chose? Wait, what? Wait, what? The glass. No. What? Both glasses? What the fuck? Wait, what? I'm sorry, did I hit like the wrong button or something the first time? I must hit the wrong button because I just hit all the buttons and it didn't do anything. This must be it. Okay, it, I, 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 <laughs> sorry, I'm an idiot. Her mouth on a glass, but she didn't die. I guess I must, I must have hit X the first time for, and I, when I thought I picked Karen. Which means only the glass Cotton chose contains poison. I think my brain's getting mixed up because I'm, I'm reading the, the, the buttons here, and again, it's like. It's backwards because it's a fucking Nintendo control. This way. Okay. <laughs> I thought I was done for. I'm getting fucked up in this one. Yeah, yeah. Quit being lazy and get a move on. That flashing light's gonna make me give me a seizure, dude. Hey, 
Are you sure that only the glass Cotton took had poison in it? Yes. Isn't it possible both of them were poisoned? Warana drank from the other glass and didn't die. That has to mean only Cotton's glass had the poison. Then how did the culprit get Cotton to pick the glass with the poison? Well, maybe the culprit wasn't after Cotton specifically. They didn't care who wound up drinking the poison. Hmm, I'm not sure about that. I think Cotton absolutely was the target. Okay. Uh, this way? Whoa, here it comes! <laughs> hey! This one's a cutie! She's totally my type. Oh, my heart! I am in love. Let me tell the truth. The culprit is Warana. Seriously? Thanks for telling us. <laughs> yep, that's it. You're so gullible! She's obviously lying! You serious? That was a lie? It it's was a lie! No lie. Waruna knew which glass was poisoned. Either the glass with the poison was filled just a bit higher up, or she marked the right glass beforehand. Knowing that, Warana prompted Cotton to select the glass which contained poison. Did her? How? Only the two of them were on stage. She could guide Cotton through the scene. Before or after each line of dialogue, she could have easily signaled her with gestures or glances. Yeah, that checks out. I don't think she's saying anything super questionable. The glass? Uh, did Warana know which glass had the poison? I get it. We have to pick the right one. I'm counting on you, Yuma. Right. How am I supposed to know here, huh? How the fuck do I know? Kurumi testified that from the wing, she did not see anything suspicious from Warana, who was listening to the music concert until the performance began. As far as Kurumi knows, Warana did not go anywhere near the glasses or bottle before the performance. I'm gonna say no. What? It's that glass! I told you Arana is the culprit! Why? Don't you believe me? Why doesn't anyone believe me? Oh, wait, don't cry. I'm completely helpless against the woman's tears. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Cotton filled the glasses. Warna wouldn't have been able to tell which one had poison just by the amount of liquid. Yeah. Well, how about marking the glass itself? No. We didn't see any of that. Master testified that there wasn't a single mark on either glass. No, they were spotless. We can't let anything happen to the glasses our actors use. Oh, no, really? I'm surprised you investigated that much. <laughs> Are you sure you're a rookie, Yuma? It was all thanks to your forte. So it's thanks to me. <laughs> I knew it. I didn't lie! <laughs> no one believes me. Everyone else is lying! <laughs> Why won't you believe me? Because you're a fucking demon. The mystery labyrinth is a reflection of the real world, right? Then maybe what she's crying about is... A reflection of the real world. Then she must have grown up surrounded by a bunch of scumbags. That's it. I'll warm her up with my charisma once we're back in the real world. That is exactly what a scumbag would say. Okay, uh, moving on. Anyway, the two glasses got shuffled, right? So the odds were 
Maybe she just relied on luck. If she hit her target, perfect. If not, who cares? I doubt it. But it's impossible to get the victim to pick a specific glass after shuffling them. <sighs> Man, why did the culprit even do this? It's way too much trouble to pull off a murder in the middle of a performance. <laughs> Not wrong. That's it. Maybe there's a reason why it had to be done during the play. Huh? What do you mean? The culprit had to make the victim choose the poison glass on stage for some reason. If that's the case, there could be a trick involving the stage itself. Whoa! No sound bite there. Back in the minecart again, or oh no, we're over here. No, 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 no. How did the culprit make Karen choose the poison glass? So now we gotta prove how the poison glass was picked. You got this, Yuma? Yeah, I'll do my best. The lights. Here. This is it. Yup. Got that right. That's right. The spotlight. The culprit used the spotlight to get caught in to select the poisoned glass. The spotlight? The how? The culprit told Cotton to take whichever glass the spotlight hit first. As a matter of fact, Cotton's script had a note written in her own handwriting. It said, take the glass the spotlight hits first. No way! The table was directly under the catwalk with the spotlight. So from here, you could see how the shuffling was done. If you know that much, then it's pretty much solved. So, who made Karen pick the poison glass? Gotta be Kern, eh? It can't be me. It's uh, not me. Yeah, you're right. It's fucking Fuck you, me. bitch. <gasps> Shut up. Uh! Someone who managed the lighting during the performance indicated the poison glass to Cotton. Kurane. She was in charge of the lights on the catwalk. I knew it was you! Whoa! What's going on? I always thought you were gloomy and creepy. But I didn't think you'd actually murder someone. On top of that, you used the sacred props from our play! I knew you'd murder someone one of these days! Why don't you take responsibility and just die? Everything would be better if you just disappeared! I, I didn't do it! I'm not the culprit! Supposed to be like this. Why can't everyone be nice to me? <laughs> Costume staff testimony, production manager's testimony, lighting staff testimony. The costumes were given a final check in the wings right before the performance. It would have been impossible to hide something under under them. It was Kurane's idea to shine the spotlight on the wine glass after the shuffling scene. There was nothing unusual about Kurane during the performance. She went up the catwalk before the play and stayed there for the duration. I'm thinking it's going to be this one or this one. Let's go with the shuffling one. Not the culprit. First, Kurane. You use the sacred stage for murder. The sacred stage. You the poison into the glass, didn't you? You knew which glass had the poison. So you just shine the spotlight on it. Kurane is the culprit after all. Hmm. 
Seems like we're actually trying to maybe prove that it couldn't have been, potentially might not have been her. So maybe it's not gonna be this. Right, keep going. That's it. Do you prove Kearney got Karen to choose the poison glass? So does that make Kearney the murderer? What? Would she really have done it? She planted the poison. Kearney's actions during the play might give us some clues. So there was nothing unusual about Kearney during the performance. She went up to the catwalk before the play and stayed there for the duration. So she couldn't have known which one had the poison in it, essentially. You slipped the poison into the glass, didn't you? Oh, wait, right. Come on, there we go. I just some music changes when I put on the uh, the shield for my my party member. The poison is neutralized after 30 minutes, but the murder occurred 45 minutes into the play. In other words, the poison had to have been poured into the glass after the play began. But Kurene was up in the catwalk even before the play started. She was up there the whole time too. Yeah, it's interesting. We're, we're like essentially going. We're like saying it had to have been this person, but then we're getting to this part here and saying, wait, maybe not, <laughs> essentially. If that's the case, it's impossible for Kurene to have poured the poison. <laughs> yeah, uh. It is gonna be, it's gonna be all three oh, girls work together. Spawn. Essentially what, what we're doing is saying, well, they did this thing, yeah, but they couldn't have done this other stuff. Wait, what's going on? Kurane isn't the culprit? Didn't you say Kurane used the spotlight to get Karen to pick the poison glass? Yes, but she couldn't have poured the poison into the glass herself, which means she can't be the culprit. So that means the culprit is... <laughs> I don't get it at all! I give up! Well, the path keeps going, so let's think about it as we go. That sword sure is sharp, Yuma. Can you cut through anything with it? The solution blade is effective on anything inside the mystery labyrinth. Anger master, and he'll cut you in half. Damn, I can do that? <laughs> Don't do it, Yuma. You and I are pals, aren't we? My man! <laughs> <laughs> My man! I'd never do anything like that. I think. Yeah, I know that. I, I just had a gut reaction to what she said, you know? Ugh, we could have threatened him into becoming Master's loyal slave. You better hit a dead end again? Yep. <sighs> What's going on here? It's a dead end. Hmm. It doesn't seem like there's a hidden question here. This really is a true dead end. A true dead end? It means you can't reach the truth just by answering, how was the poison glass chosen? Then it was all a waste of time? Well, they should have at least left us a treasure chest or something. Hey, Yuma, it's your fault for picking this route. What? What? Well, reaching a dead end is expected inside a dungeon. Think of it as stamping out one possibility and move on. Oh, totally. You are always right, Shinigami. You change your tune awful quick. For now, let's head back to where the roots change. Time for a convenient magical spell. Time to zoom again. All right, so now we're gonna tur turn towards. Uh, All right, time to start over. Which route do you want to pick? The other girl, right? The one on stage. So Karnay's had had her time. Yoshka's had her time, and now it's gonna be Warren's time. How was the poison mixed into the glass? Are you sure you want to take the? Yes, yes, come on, just go. So we're gonna solve the mystery of how was the poison mixed into the glass. Actually, I was thinking about that. Maybe it's wrong to think the poison was in the glass itself. Yeah, the peacekeeper said the same thing. Poison was only found on the victim's glass. Oh, right. If that's the case, it narrows down the possibilities for how by a lot. But don't let your guard down. Unriddling a mystery labyrinth is never so simple. Never.
All right, now what? Boulder! <laughs> what is this? <laughs> what is this shit? I told you it wasn't easy. <laughs> <laughs> run, my run! Stop ah! laughing! <laughs> Don't worry. Come on, concentrate. Uh, focus, you. Uh, mm. When was the glass set on the stage? For the play, during the play, after the play, uh, before the play. The prop master placed the glasses on the shelf an hour before the performance began. This is real bad, Yuma. We've got more boulders coming at us. Come on, concentrate, concentrate. There's another door. Master. When was the poison placed in the glass? During the play. The poison is effective for 30 minutes, but the duel of poison's cup scene occurred 45 minutes into the play. Which means the only way the poison could be used was during the performance. Okay, no problem. I... I think... we made it through. There's no time to slack off. We gotta keep going. So the poison trick was actually set up during the performance. By the way, I like to point out how, how, how all the colors are, are blue, uh, yellow, and red, which are literally the Persona 3, 4, and 5 themes. <laughs> the poison is effective for 30 minutes, but the duel of poison's cup scene occurred 45 minutes into the play. Which means the only way the poison could be used was during the performance. But that glass was on stage the whole time, wasn't it? True. The set was fixed an hour before the play, and the glasses were already set on the shelf by then. So the culprit slipped the poison in while everyone was watching. Uh-oh. It's them. The culprit is Varuna. There is no other explanation. It has to be her. Why me? Stop making such baseless accusations! Both Yoshiko and Kurane blame Waruna? Stop it! I hate to see girls fighting each other. Why can't they direct that energy towards me? The only person who could have added poison to the glass was whoever was also on stage. So that means it has to be Warana. She's the culprit. No, 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 no! Murderer, murderer. No, 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 no! What? <laughs> Women are terrifying! <laughs> I'm not the girlfriend! I'm so angry! It's you! Yoshiko! You dumb bitch! Wine glasses, water gun, eye drop. Uh, the wine glasses. The problem for the theater club's underground storage. Right, right, right. The water gun looks like a real gun. There's a hole for adding water on top. Eyedropper typically used in science experiments. It doesn't appear to have been used. Maybe the fucking water gun. The culprit. It's you. Uh, is in the audience. Okay. She filled the water gun with poison. Oh, filled the water gun with poison. Okay. It's probably not gonna be the water gun then, but. She shot the poison straight into the glass. Ah, uh, that would have been interesting. She could have used night vision to see. She knew when the stage would be dark. So it's possible she prepared for that. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Saying your skill's the murderer. Apparently, she waited for the last cup for the point of the poison. Yoshiko was in the audience. 
So could she really have poured into the glass on stage? Oh, oh, she couldn't have shot into the glass. I'm like, I'm like, this already seems like a ridiculous one. This is more like <laughs> she, she had night vision goggles. She shot it all the way across the stage from in the audience. It's already like crazy enough. But no, oh, but it's because the, the glasses were, were upside down when they came in. I'm not the culprit. Like, what am I trying to point out here? A lot, because a lot of this is ridiculous. Yoshka! She shot the poison straight into the glass. Shut your dumb day already! Flash through this mystery. No, the wine glass was upside down on the shelf. Even if she did use a water gun, there's no way she could have done it since the glass was upside down. <laughs> Women are really tough. I'm not the culprit. It's you, Kurane! You're the one holding a gun right now, by the way. <laughs> now she's going to turn to Kurane, okay. It's funny how everybody else, like, it's, yeah, based on the personalities here, right? Yoshiko, all three of them turn into uh, the crazy self. Kurane... Only everyone that wasn't current I turned to the crazy self because she's kind of meek. And now for this one, she's turning to the crazy self and, and t just yelling at everybody else because she's just the really aggressive type, right? Oh. Oh, I just got to... I got to knock away the, the false one here. Ow. Ow. Then it's your Don't Does it hold up? How do you think Kurane did it? What's your reasoning? Uh, okay. Fine. I'll tell you why Kurane is the culprit. Just start with that. Okay, costume, staff testimony, production. Manager's testimony, lying staff. So, costumes were given a final check. Would be impossible to hide something under them. It was Kurane's idea to shine the line spotlight on the wine glass after the shuffling scene. There was nothing unusual about Kurane during the performance. She went up the catwalk. Hmm. All right, I'll see what they have to say. Okay. Yeah. Kurane was on the catwalk. Right. And mixes the poison into the glass. Uh-huh. Ow. Using an eyedropper. Funny. Okay. <laughs> She's saying exactly what I was thinking. Fuck. Oh, my God. Okay. Kurane used an eyedropper to add the poison. I put on a special show just for you. She did it from the catwalk above. She tricked the poison right in. Trick the poison right in. Is that it? It is it. Right. Security was in charge of the lighting. She definitely could have poured the poison out from the catwalk. Did she really do that? TV was suspicious, but only now should she stand out. There's nothing unusual about her. Maybe just that. She took the poison right in. No! person on the catwalk another member was working the lights yeah she claims Kurane didn't do anything suspicious during the performance because of that testimony it's impossible Kurane added the poison from the catwalk yeah I kind of yeah I kind of neglected that didn't I I mean she said she was doing anything before the performance I kind of thought she meant like before she went up on the catwalk but it she meant while they were up there together <laughs> And they did say that she isn't the only person up there working the lights. So it's proven that both Yoshiko and Kurane couldn't have added the poison to the glass. So Waruna really is the culprit. She's the one who snuck in the poison. I thought you were better than that, Waruna. I thought you would compete with your performance fair and square. I always knew something was off about her. Oh, it's not me. It really isn't me. Liar. Liar. Tables have turned. Liar, 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 liar! 
Not yelling anymore. Okay. Staff testimony, production manager testimony, lying staff. It's the same as before, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, now it's gonna be this one. Costume staff testimony, for sure. She had a chance to add the poison herself. She knocked to herself in Lindsay. Her back is to Cotton and the audience. She added the poison from her pocket. No, she did it! This is the truth. No, Warna wasn't concealing anything on her person. The costumer confirmed it. So it was impossible for Warren to have brought the poison with her on stage. <laughs> Aw, they're all gone now. Wait, so Warren wasn't the culprit? Does that mean she didn't add the poison to the glass? It's a fact that she didn't bring the poison on stage. So naturally, she couldn't have poisoned the glass. Well, but then... What really happened here? I'm so confused. Let's think about it and keep going. Okay. What if I use my disguise to get new information out of the three of them? It's no use. I already did that during the investigation. Oh, you did, huh? But your disguise ability is incredible. It's like I was a completely different person. Makeup is one thing, but my voice and stature match too. I use a voice changer to synthesize a new voice. If I've heard it even once, I can easily set it up. I use tape to make your body appear thinner, or add padding for the opposite effect. Is that really what's happening? Height can be adjusted by messing with your joints. Up to a certain point. Yeah. But there are limits, given how it strains the body. The more you explain it, the more it sounds like you could commit a lot of crimes pretty easily. <laughs> if I'm being honest, I must resist my urges every single day. It's a daily battle to tame the monster inside me. I forgot six Desuhiko. Desuhiko, that sounds more weird than cool. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, you may not want to tell people that. So wait, we've run past the dead end this time? Or is there another one down here? There's another one down here! Why is there one over there, too? Huh? A dead end? <laughs> what are you doing, Desuhiko? about this path being blocked, so I try to just ignore it. Damn, it didn't work. Hmm, doesn't seem like a question is gonna appear. Looks like it's a completely dead end. I guess we can't reach the truth by answering how was the poison mixed into the glass. So this whole route was a waste? Well, we did eliminate one of the possibilities. Sometimes the journey is just as important as the destination. Yeah, it's funny. This one didn't really come out with an answer, honestly. It was just more like, yeah, like, she couldn't have done She couldn't have done it. The journey. I like the sound of that. I'll use that for lyrics in my next song. Well, seemingly we kind of answered that in another route, to be honest. Anyway, let's use my convenient magic spell to return to where you select roots. Like painting it in the glass, and but it, it doesn't answer how the glass, I guess, got up there? Or at what point? Alright, zoom. Think about it. Wasn't that the third route? Uh, what's going on? They're all dead ends. 